This video introduces the idea of an average value of a function. To take the average of a finite list of numbers, we just add the numbers up and divide by n, the number of numbers. In summation notation, we write the sum from i equals 1 to n of qi, all divided by n. But defining the average value of a continuous function is a little different because a function can take on infinitely many values on an interval from a to b. We could estimate the average value of the function by sampling it at finitely many evenly spaced x values. I'll call them x1 through xn, and let's assume that they're spaced a distance of delta x apart. Then the average value of f at these sample points is just the sum of the values of f divided by n, the number of values. Or in summation notation, the sum from i equals 1 to n of f of xi, all divided by n. This is an approximate average value of f, since we're just using n sample points. But the approximation gets better as the number of sample points n gets bigger and bigger. So we could define the average as the limit as n goes to infinity of this sample average. I'd like to make this look more like a Riemann sum, so I need to get delta x in there. So I'm just going to multiply the top and the bottom by delta x, and notice that n times delta x is just the length of the interval, b minus a. Now as the number of sample points goes to infinity, delta x, the distance between them, goes to zero. So I can rewrite my limit as the limit as delta x goes to zero of the sum of fxi times delta x divided by b minus a. Now the limit of this Riemann sum in the numerator is just the integral from a to b of f of x dx. And so the average value of the function is given by the integral on the interval from a to b divided by the length of the interval. Notice the similarity between the formula for the average value of a function and the formula for the average value of a list of numbers. The integral for the function corresponds to the summation sign for the list of numbers, and the length of the interval, b minus a, for the function corresponds to n, the number of numbers in the list of numbers. Now let's work an example for the function g of x equals 1 over 1 minus 5x on the interval from 2 to 5. We know that the average value of g is given by the integral from 2 to 5 of 1 over 1 minus 5x dx divided by the length of that interval. I'm going to use u substitution to integrate. So I'm going to set u equal to 1 minus 5x. So du is negative 5 dx. In other words, dx is negative 1 fifth times du. Looking at my bounds of integration, when x is equal to 2, u is equal to 1 minus 5 times 2, which is negative 9. And when x is equal to 5, u is equal to negative 24. Substituting into my integral, I get the integral from negative 9 to negative 24 of 1 over u times negative 1 fifth du. And that's divided by 3. Now dividing by 3 is the same as multiplying by 1 third. And as I integrate, I'm going to pull the negative 1 fifth out and then take the integral of 1 over u, that's ln of the absolute value of u, evaluated in between negative 24 and negative 9. The absolute value signs are important here because they prevent me from trying to take the natural log of negative numbers. To evaluate, I get negative 1 fifteenth times ln of 24 minus ln of 9. I can use my log rules to simplify and get negative 1 fifteenth ln of 24 over 9. That's negative 1 fifteenth ln of 8 thirds. And as a decimal, 
that's approximately negative 0 0.0654. So I've found the average value of g. Now my next question is, does g ever achieve that average value? In other words, is there a number c in the interval from 2 to 5 for which g of c equals its average value? Well, one way to find out is just to set g of c equal to g's average value. In other words, set 1 over 1 minus 5c equal to negative 1 15th ln of 8 thirds and try to solve for c. There are lots of ways to solve this equation, but I'm going to take the reciprocal of both sides, subtract 1 from both sides, and divide by negative 5. This simplifies to 3 over ln of 8 thirds plus 1 fifth, which is approximately 3.25, and that x value does lie inside the interval from 2 to 5. So we've demonstrated that g does achieve its average value over the interval, but in fact we could have predicted this to be true. g's average value has to lie somewhere between g's minimum value and maximum value on this interval, and since g is continuous on the interval from 2 to 5, it has to achieve every value that lies in between its minimum and maximum, including its average value. This same argument shows that for any continuous function, the function must achieve its average value on an interval. And this is known as the mean value theorem for integrals. Namely, for any continuous function f of x on an interval from a to b, there has to be at least one number c between a and b such that f of c equals its average value, or in symbols, f of c equals the integral from a to b of f of x dx divided by b minus a. This video gave the definition of an average value of a function and stated the mean value theorem for integrals. If we rewrite the formula for average value a little, then we can see a geometric interpretation for average value. The area of the box with height the average value is the same as the area under the curve.